Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, glad to have you here today for our weekly training. And um, today, what we're going to talk about is the culmination of what we had uh, in regards to a uh, training series. Uh, we started it in August, uh, had a couple road bumps, i.e. had to travel a few places. And so, um, you know, I, it took a couple uh, pushes back uh, from something we were supposed to finish in August, but uh, we've gone through a series of different uh, ways that you can service your client. And this is kind of the, the culmination of all of that. So uh, for those who don't know, Phil Resch, been in the insurance industry now for 18 years, have worked with two major uh, Fortune 100 companies, uh, be it MetLife and then AIG, work with financial advisors, uh, independent agents, career agents, uh, all across uh, the platform before I decided to go independent and created uh, what you see today at Valor Financial Specialists. So, um, you know, kind of going in, this is uh, the culmination of what we talked about in the first week was ABRs. So when we talk about ABRs or living benefits, those are typically built into products that cover chronic, critical and terminal illness. Uh, the idea is it gives you peace of mind, uh, helps maintain the standard of living uh, with typically no additional cost. Uh, what I like to say for the living benefits piece is the living benefits acts like a safety parachute. So when you think about the living benefits, this is like if someone forgot to get true long-term care planning or things that we're going to talk about today, if they have this, this would provide them at least something uh, in case of an emergency. So when you think about the typical carriers that have these type of living benefits, uh, you know, I used to uh, work for AIG, uh, now Corbridge, and I would say they still have some of the best, if not the best, uh, living benefits built into the portfolio, uh, simply because they go the highest at $2 million, both for chronic, critical, and even terminal. And all risk classes are included. So if you see in the bottom left-hand corner, all risk classes are included, whereas all the other carriers have a, a governor to it, like table D or better, uh, table B or better. And they even have the ability to strip away living benefits if they feel that uh, you know they're gonna pretty much be accessed. So uh, that's why I say when it comes to the actual living benefit story, again, being the safety parachute, uh, term insurance, things like that. Uh, AIG still seems to take the cake or Corbridge takes the cake uh, from that also a cost efficiency standpoint. Now, North American, Columbus, uh, they have a different type of rider setup. It's more of a lean method. You're taking a loan against the policy versus actually getting an accelerated amount. And so week one, we, we went in depth when it came to the living benefit conversation or ABRs. And uh, once again, if you want to see more about this one specifically, definitely feel free to check out the YouTube station. Um, but then moving on to uh, what we talked about after that was traditional long-term care. You know, when we look at a standalone long-term care policy, you know, it really is what started at all. Uh, standalone LTC policies were several companies that did this. So Genworth, MetLife, Transamerica, John Hancock, Mutual of Omaha. Uh, unfortunately, the number of carriers has severely dwindled uh, in this realm simply because a lot of people made a lot of wrong assessments on uh, the need for long-term care. I was actually at MetLife when they stopped selling uh, long-term care policies and I asked someone, I said, why are we selling them if everybody needs it? They're like, exactly, because that means they're going to be using all the money that, you know, we took in plus then some uh, to, to pay out all those claims. It's becoming a very hot topic, especially with the gray wave coming through uh, with tens of thousands of, of uh, people turning 65 every single day. But traditional long-term care, you know, provides a pool of dollars, pays a benefit if you can't perform activity, activities of daily living, two out of six. 
Uh, you have some type of concern, whether cognitive impairment like Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's. And when we talk guaranteed renewable, they say as long as you pay your premium, you'll have coverage. Now, that's not the same as guaranteed premium because they can actually increase the premium on you. Uh, there is short-term recovery, home health care, comprehensive. Those are your options. Basically, what it's saying is that it can be a temporary need or permanent. So if, for example, sake, you, I always like to use the, the terminology of you broke both your arms, both your legs, and you can't, you know, do anything for yourself, those two out of six activities of daily living for at least 90 days. So premiums can vary based on age and the benefits you choose. Uh, most people are looking for options like how much is a monthly benefit amount for how long and how long are you going to wait before you actually get that coverage. So this would be what a typical plan would look like. Uh, there is no frills to their illustrations at all. Uh, so you'll see in this scenario, you have a couple that is applying together for 36 months worth of coverage or 360000 as the policy limit. The maximum monthly benefit is $10,000 in this example, and it's assisted living. Home health care is all 100%. Now, the difference with long-term care policies is you see that next one where it says cash benefit. Uh, cash benefit basically stating that if you actually want cash versus, you know, the receipts, then you would only get $2,000. Some people want cash more than they want uh, the traditional long-term care with the receipts. And then you'll see here where it says partnership qualified. Uh, what it's saying is, um, sorry, let me get my little mouse back. There we go, partnership qualified where it says yes. What that means is you have to have a form of compounding or growth built into the plan. So if you have no compounding, it cannot be considered partnership qualified. So what does partnership qualified do? It takes that 360,000 benefit pool. And what you'll see is, is that 360,000 is if I run out of this money, if I run out of the 360000 then I have to go on Medicaid. And with Medicaid, it's basically like you have to impoverish yourself. So in this scenario, what they're saying is if you're partnership qualified, you have a bucket of 360000 that you're protected against the spend down to get on Medicaid. So I could keep 360000 in my bank account and then still go on Medicaid with traditional long-term care if I needed to. That is one of the only perks left, in my opinion, for traditional long-term care. So then next we chose to talk about hybrid long-term care slash life policies. And there's a reason why I phrased it long-term care slash life, not life slash long-term care because you're really focusing on the long-term care piece. It's a never money concept. So it's usually defined or de usually desired by financial advisors. So financial advisors, we have to think of what a financial advisor does. They usually try and keep as much assets under management because that's how they make their money. And so they understand that there's a gap that they have to fill a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that people will be protected in the long run in their retirement. And one of the biggest gaps is long-term care. So they'll say to a client, hey, you've got 150,000 sitting in the savings account for long-term care. Why don't we throw it into a hybrid policy where it'll give you liquidity options, for example, say 70% of what you put into the policy you could surrender immediately almost. It's a simplified app process, but keep in mind the older you get, the harder it is to get this kind of coverage. Uh, reimbursement or indemnity. So in certain situations, when we think about what these hybrid type products are, mostly reimbursement, meaning you're gonna need receipts. And the reason why I'm not a huge fan is it is kind of like a high deductible plan. So say for example, sake I put in, $100,000, and then um, you're basically drawing down that $100,000 first, 
before you even get to what the insurance company is giving you. But there is a death benefit attached to it. For example, say here, you'll see that a 60 year old female put in 100,000, liquidity of 70 grand, and a death benefit of about 43 and a half more than what she invested in the policy. You'll see the annual total over here uh, of how much LTC she's getting. I put a compounding benefit on this as well. And you'll see as time goes on, say age 80, you got 125,000 or up to 10,500 per month. Now, once again, this is reimbursement. So it is completely up to the receipts received from the company. And notice the death benefit has never changed. The cash value has never changed. So now we step into what we talk about today. Instead of uh, a LTC slash life, we're talking about a life with an LTC type rider. And so we're gonna look at what it is, what are the different carriers and how we can help. So when we think about this in example sake, what we're looking at solely is a life first focus. There is a death benefit with an attached long-term care rider or chronic illness. Instead of me saying LTC or CI, I'm gonna just say LTC because it's quicker and it means the same thing pretty much at this point. Liquidity options. So if you put this on say an index universal life chassis, you have cash accumulation or liquidity options. You also have a potential for non-med. So depending on when your client wants to take out these assets, you have or wants to fund these assets. So if they're 60 or below, you can potentially get non-med with this type of solution. It is still reimbursement or indemnity. So you have to figure out which one uh, your client wants. I've heard the story for both sides. I have an opinion, but I'm not here to give you my opinion. I'm here to give you the facts and let you dictate what you want. So, and I'll show you some examples and where you can see different riders too. Uh, we have different illustration designs as well. So this is unique. For example, sake, with long-term care, you're typically paying your entire life. With the indemnity uh, or reimbursement-based options for the hybrids, it's usually like a single pay up to 10, maybe even 20 pay for the most part. Here you can pay your entire life. You can pay 15 years, 20 years, two years. So there's a lot of different designs you can do in this type of scenario. And once again, the focus is on the death benefit with the assist of the long-term care. This is the, the product that I would say uh, you have mostly uh, benefits with the liquidity options over time. And the death benefit, you definitely maximize this versus the other options. And I'll show you in just a minute here. So how do we look for the portfolio? So at Valor, we have 30 carriers at our fingertips. Uh, I usually focus on a core five to keep it simple, but to have the strength and value behind all the different carriers at your fingertips, it's always good to know that you have all of these available. Now, when you talk about a life policy with, let's say, for example, say a chronic illness rider, you have one, two, three, four, five options right here. And again, I'm not talking about just ABRs. I'm talking about a pay for rider that you're going to use for a dollar for dollar reduction of your death benefit. ABRs are you know, an accelerated amount, these are true dollar for dollar reduction. So we have AIG partners, uh, AIG as well, uh, also known as Corebridge now, Prudential Protective, uh, Symmetra, they have a chronic illness rider built in, and uh, Securian, also known as Minnesota Life. Now on the flip side, we have long-term care uh, riders as well. So that would be John Hancock nationwide, Lincoln and Mutual of Omaha. Now, if you wanted to see this, so again, pretty much our contracts uh, for the most part uh, go through uh, 3Mark Financial. So just to kind of show you, once you log in on 3Mark Financial site, we have a thing called IntelliSheets. 
And so if I go to three mark financial and I go to underwriting and I go to the underwriting and impaired risk. And then on the second tab here, it says Intel and you have IntelliSheets. Now three mark is part of the Libra uh, organization or uh, IMO. Uh, and so they added in these IntelliSheets. So what you'll see is based off of different opportunities or options, you can figure out who does what. So I checked the box for chronic illness. I checked the box for long-term care. And then I checked every single carrier here. And I said, open in Excel. So open up in Excel. And what will pop up is uh, what I would say a menu of different carriers and what they have uh, brought to the table. You have two tabs, chronic illness, long-term care. I highlighted the ones that are truly chronic illness riders versus ABRs, because these carriers have ABRs built in. But when you talk about the true asset and how it works, I highlighted them here on my, my uh, sheet just for, for grins. But it gives you the benefits. It gives you some notes on the products. Uh, about premiums, this is something that's very important about waiver of monthly deductions or monthly premiums. Uh, so you'll see that some carriers have it, some do not. Um, and so for example, sake, you'll typically see that in the LTC riders, you'll see uh, we'll waive premiums, but will not and will not lapse the policy. You have others that will waive, uh, for example, sake the cost of the life insurance, but not the cost of the product itself you know, or the rider, the way of the rider fee, but not the cost of insurance. So there's different strokes for different folks is the best way to put it. But we have them all at your fingertips uh, through our, our value proposition here. So how does it work? You know, once again, two out of six ADLs or severe cognitive impairment does not require to be permanent. I'm using the AAS rider, for example, here. Again, a lot of them can be different, but uh, they set it up in a very pretty manner. Uh, this is indemnity benefits, so there's no receipts. There's no spending uh, benefits on like only nursing home or only uh, care. You can take the money of Vegas, put it on black and let it ride for all we care. It is your money to spend. Now, what I will say is, is that on the flip side, to give a factor benefit to the reimbursement type of rider, Reimbursement riders are receipt driven. That is the story. Now, when you talk about a chronic illness uh, pusher versus a long-term care pusher, they'll say that as a bad thing, but the companies have what's called care coordination. So the care coordination is set up between the insurance company and the, let's say, nursing home to ultimately set up someone with the care coordination and the receipt. So it goes between the insurance company and the nursing home. So from that standpoint, when you think about it, if someone has a cognitive impairment, like uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, uh, you might be sending them a check, they might not know where the heck it is. Whereas if you have reimbursement, it's going right from the insurance company to the, the healthcare. So there's no worries of a missed payment. So just giving food for thought on the reimbursement side, I'm not saying one is better than the other. It just depends. But the one thing I do like about the indemnity side is typically they do have this full waiver of monthly deduction, which basically means that if I go on claim, and in this example, let's say I only have a 50% benefit base. So on a $2 million policy, I only have a million dollars uh, that has the AAS rider in it. Well, if I go on claim, then the full waiver of monthly deductions or all my costs of insurance are waived until I get better or I pass away, even though 50% of it is, is all I picked for being on, uh, um, you know, a long-term care benefit for. And these are the typical options. So you get 2%, 4%. Uh, Corbridge has the IRS per diem everywhere but California. So most people, 90% of people pick the 2% option just because it's simple math. Um, and, and, you know, it's just the first option. So most people think it's more cost efficient. So that's typically how long-term care type riders work on these type of policies. 
Uh, the best way I can show it is uh, from an example standpoint. Let's say, for example, sake, we have a 60 year old female. And um, again, when you're talking to, say, uh, a husband and a wife, most of the time, uh, you know, you're going to have this conversation about the, the wife versus the husband uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, men, sorry, uh, but we do die first. And typically there's discounts given when couples are buying traditional long-term care because they know that the wife is going to tend to the husband before he gets traditional care. And so typically if there's a fight between uh, they can't afford to give long-term care to both, you always want to identify it more for the female uh, for the standpoint of, you know, when she's left by herself, who's going to take care of her. And it's a hard conversation to have with people, but it's a conversation that needs to be had. So when we look at this, uh, we're taking from example's sake, and I'm going to compare first. Uh, I'm not comparing living benefits to a pay for rider because as I mentioned before, it's more of a safety parachute. So from a traditional standpoint of, how to compare and contrast between traditional long-term care and, and the, these type of benefits. Uh, we'll look first at long-term care versus life insurance with a long-term care rider. Now, if you'll see here, uh, what I did was I took the 720,000 benefit, which is basically four years worth of coverage at about $15,000 per month. It made it partnership qualified, so it's going to increase over time at a 3% clip. And once again, that means that's 15,000 will go up over time. You have 100% home health care and assisted living, and that cash benefit of 2,000, and it costs you roughly $1,400 a month, or 15, 9, 16 a year. Now you'll see here a 5% partner discount. Basically, this is a married couple, but we opted in this scenario for only one person to get long-term care. So that is the 60-year-old female, and it's about 15, almost 16 grand a year. So I could do two ways to compare this to a long-term care uh, rider on a life policy. I could simply just take this $15,000 benefit and find out what a policy would cost for 15,000. But because this person is doing an inflation protection, it's growing over time. I took the 1432 and copied it over to a life policy with a 2% benefit. Now, if we do the math, 2% of $1.1 million is roughly about 20 plus thousand. I think it's like 22,000 ish. So right off the bat, I'm already giving someone a higher number right up front. And it's going to take a while for that 15,000 to inflate up to the 20 plus thousand dollars. But on top of that, I'm giving them the living benefit piece. So, or excuse me, the death benefit piece. So if I don't make it, or if she doesn't make it to retirement, she doesn't pass or she passes away before using this. That's the 1.1 million in tax free death benefit to give to either a spouse, kids. Uh, so you have a legacy built in, but more of a safety net of 20 plus thousand dollars a month that this client can use for the next four years. So when you think about the comparison between the two, once again, it goes back to choice for the client. But I think between all of us on this call today, it's a pretty safe assumption to say that the life insurance with the long-term care rider can make a lot of sense. Also, given the fact that this policy is guaranteed to 93 and from a liquidity standpoint, because this has no cash in it on the left. On the right-hand side, we have built-in return of premium at years 20 and 25. So if the client wants to bail on this, they have opportunities to get either 50% or 100% of their money back. Not 70%, it's a guaranteed 50 or 70 or, or, or 100%. So that's long-term care versus life insurance with a long-term care type rider.
Then we look at the hybrid. So once again, the idea of the hybrid was that never money. And Mrs. 60 year old had 150,000 of never money, giving her a death benefit of 268, 684. And in this scenario, I picked a different carrier that had a different product. So you'll see the cash value rose over time, right? But the death benefit stays the same. The long-term care pool stayed the same because I didn't have an inflation protection on it. And so the monthly total is 11,195 or annual 134,342. Well, I did the same thing here from this 60 year old. I did 150,000 as the opportunity. And you'll see we did a single pay. Yes, it's going to be a MEC contract, but in this scenario, a MEC doesn't really matter because with the living benefits on these type of products, you can accelerate the death benefit. This is a dollar for dollar reduction. You can accelerate that without having to pay any MEC violations because it's an acceleration of death benefit. But what you'll notice here, 150,000 at year 20, I can get at least guaranteed half my money back or at 25, I can get guaranteed $150,000 or a full return of premium, which the other product doesn't offer. It's a growth uh, product off of a full life chassis but it doesn't give you a full guarantee. Now you'll see at year 25, I have $208,000 in cash. Over here, I have almost $300,000 in cash. But most importantly is you have 11,195. And over here, you have 2% of 639,000. Uh, if I'm gonna do simple math, I'll take the 600,000, multiply that by 2%, and you're at $12,000 a month. So as you can see, in this scenario, Mr. Mrs. Client has a higher death benefit to give in case she doesn't need the money, more cash, and a higher long-term care benefit per month for the same 150,000. So it's not always one size fits all. There's definitely different options per customer. So really when it boils down to it, when we talk about the results, I've, I found this picture online and I couldn't help myself. Um, you know, really the results are beauty is in the eye of the beholder. You as a financial professional are the one who can go over the different options or also more importantly, if you're going up against something like a traditional long-term care, how to look at it the right way a hybrid product, how to look at it the right way, just living benefits or living benefits with a long-term care rider. So the idea is, is that once again, the education side is, is every company or every person is going to have a different opinion. Um, that's why I say when you partner with someone like myself, you've seen it all, been there, done that, uh, have the brochure, but we're really here to help you guys grow uh, and, and ultimately find the right opportunity for your end consumer. So really it's time for action. You know, what is the action step for you guys? Who are you looking for in this scenario? Uh, really in this situation, the most people who uh, look for this type of opportunity are between the ages of 40 and 70. Now, why do I say 40 to 70? Well, typically after 70, it is statistically harder to get long-term care type solutions or the carriers limit how many riders are available over 70. So it gets harder. That's why I say you wanna have the conversation between 40 to 70, why 40? A lot easier to get it, lost, a lot more cost efficient. And that would be someone, uh, the big thing is they're not really living paycheck to paycheck. So if you have someone who's just striving to just make ends meet, they're not thinking about long-term care, they're thinking about survival. So we really wanna make sure that they have a decent nest egg, they're saving for retirement, but the biggest issue when it comes to saving for retirement is the unexpected loss or potential loss due to things like health concerns. So that would be the ideal focus 
and once again, the ability to protect against future concerns. They don't know what they don't know. Uh, I like to say our job is to find and solve problems that people didn't know they had. And ultimately, this is one of the biggest problems that's staring everybody in the face, but they're too afraid to talk about them. So that's why it's our job. That's why we got to get in front of people, whether it's, again, in summary, living benefits, ABRs, that's your safety parachute, traditional long-term care, that partnership opportunity that some people like. It's that shield against um, government spend down on Medicaid. We've got hybrid products. So someone just throws money at it, single pay, 10 pay, and calls it, or a life insurance policy with a long-term care type rider. Those are really the options that we look for. The stats show, you know, 80, 90% of us are going to have at least one chronic illness, long-term care concern. So this is almost a lot that we should have this conversation with everybody. So what I'm going to do now is that's the end of the presentation. I'm going to unrecord, but I would love for anyone to ask any questions uh, that they may have. And once again, all of this will be up on YouTube after in case you want to watch it again or you came to.